Like so many of you, I'm really disappointed that the Oxford Lit Festival isn't going ahead. Not least because I was very excited about the prospect of doing an event with Professor Emma Smith. When This Is Shakespeare came out last year, I was so excited. I hadn't read anything about English literature that had made me this excited for a very long time. What I loved was Emma's approach to the whole central tenet of Shakespeare's work, which is what she describes as gappiness. Shakespeare leaves places for our imagination to roam free. He doesn't describe what people look like. He doesn't give stage directions. So it's up to us as readers or audiences in the theatre to figure out which way this scene is going to be played, what he might have meant by this scene, what direction it takes the play in. And for me, as a crime writer, the idea of these gaps and questions was absolutely fascinating. It made me look again at the plays I thought I knew and examine them with different eyes and come away with, in some cases, maybe a different take altogether. Conversations that tutors had tried to have with me many, many years before. I can still remember uh, a night in St Hilda's arguing with Anne Elliot, my tutor, about the underlying principle of King Lear. Was it a tragedy of character flaw or was it something that you could explain with a Christian redemptive theory? And after hours of, 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 of conversation where we went hither and yon, we ended up, both of us, still ensconced in our initial positions, but we had explored it with such excitement. And Emma's book did this for me. So when I was suggested that I do an event with her at the Oxford Literature Festival, I was really fired up about the thought of this. I was also very anxious about it too, because I thought, here is somebody who is an academic, who really knows her subject. I am a dilettante. When I write my books, I know an awful lot about the things that are in that particular book for a very short space of time, and then I forget them. But one thing that has been in the back of my mind as a career, as a writer, for many, many years is Christopher Marlowe's death. I suppose I first had the idea of writing about this somewhere in the region of 40 years ago. Uh, I was a graduate, I was working as a journalist, I was trying to become a writer. I'd had a little bit of early success writing plays, but the one play that I wanted to write was a play that dealt with Christopher Marlowe's last day. What actually happened in that room in Deptford where he died? There are so many myths about Marlowe's death. that There's a tavern brawl, for example. Well, first thing to dispel with that is it wasn't a tavern. It was a room in a house of a widow called Eleanor Bull. Uh, it wasn't just a place where you could, you know, rock up and have a pint. Um, and the idea that this was some sort of tavern brawl that got out of hand doesn't really hold up when you examine the personnel who were there that night, that day. Um, they were people connected, intimately connected with the household of Sir Thomas Walsingham who was the nephew of the great Elizabethan spymaster, Francis Walsingham. Over the years, I had evolved my own theory of what happened that day, why it happened, delving into the what we know about Marlowe's life and what we can deduce about his life from what we know. I was fascinated by this idea, and it took me a very, very long time to figure out how to structure a play like this. Um, it, it really, the, the, the final... The final turn of the lock came relatively recently and I was having a conversation with David Gregg, the playwright who also is the manager of the, the Lyceum Theatre in Edinburgh. And um, in the course of that conversation, he said, for novelists and, and script writers for TV and, and film, you're not, you have no limits. You can go anywhere. You can do anything with, uh, with, with your story. But in the theatre, you're always constrained. You're constrained by the physical space, you're constrained by the budget, you're constrained by the number of actors on the stage. All of these limitations are things that actually make the play work for you as a writer. And somehow it was one of those moments, I don't particularly know why, but it was one of those moments where the light bulb goes on in your head and I thought, this is it, I know how to do this now. And so I have uh, currently completed the third draft of a play commissioned by the Lyceum about the life of Marlowe. Now, of course, this is the area that uh, Emma Smith knows very, very well, early modern drama. And I came to the life of Marlowe, I suppose, through the plays. 
I was looking forward to us having a vivid and entertaining conversation that would range far and wide across Shakespeare, across Marlowe, across the beginnings of, of English theatre, the, the underpinnings of, of what we understand now uh, when we go to the theatre. And I'm really, really sorry that it's not going to happen. But I do hope that at some point in the future we can make it happen and we can all share that experience. Thanks for listening. Bye.